Hey guys, it's Layla. Our topic for today is tumors of the salivary region. Starting with pituitary tumors, so you can have the benign pituitary adenomas or the malignant one, pituitary carcinoma. The pituitary adenomas can become malignant. Once they are aggressive, they can metastasize and become invasive. For pituitary adenomas, you can have a microadenoma and a macroadenoma. Micro is less than 10 millimeters and macro is more than 10. Macroadenomas are more common. Now, a little bit about the anatomy of the pituitary gland. So, it is connected to the hypothalamus via the pituitary stalk. You have two parts of the anterior pituitary, the adenohypophysis, and the posterior pituitary, the neurohypophysis. It lies within the pituitary fossa in the cella torsica, very close to the sinuses. You have the sphenoid and the cavernous sinuses, and also to the optic chasm. When there is a mass, when it enlarges, it can compress these structures and cause the symptoms that it does cause. So, for example, if it compresses the hypothalamus or if there is a mass in the pituitary gland, you're going to have hormonal imbalance. You can have headaches. If it compresses the optic chasm, you can have visual problems, etc. Depending on the hormones and the cells that produce those hormones, you're going to have different types of functioning adenomas. These are known as functioning pituitary tumors. So you have prolactin that promote lactation in the breast. So you have prolactinoma. Symptoms include amenorrhea in women, galactorrhea, impotence. In men, you can have gynecomastia. Then you have somatotropinoma for the growth hormone, which can result in gigantism and acromegaly. Corticotropinoma for cortisol, adrenal glands. You can have Cushing's disease or Nelson syndrome, thyroid tropinoma for the thyroid hormone, hyperthyroidism. You can have one of three things. You can either have hormonal imbalance, as I mentioned earlier. You can have mass effect, which is when it compresses on structures or when it invades the sinuses. You can have pituitary apoplexy, which can be hemorrhagic or not hemorrhagic, and it is due to necrosis of the pituitary gland. It is an acute clinical condition, an emergency, and you can usually find macroadenomas in the patient's cellular region. Moving on to diagnostics, here is a T1 coronal section. It's a macroadenoma. This is a T2 coronal section of the same tumor in the cellar region or slightly supracellar. This is a T1 plus contrast. And this is a sagittal view, T1 plus contrast. You can see it is kind of invading the sphenoid sinus. Moving on to the treatment for pituitary adenomas, complete excision is preferred. For small tumors, you can use the transsphenoidal approach through the sphenoid sinus. And for larger ones, you might have to do craniotomy. For the non-functioning tumors, which is due to compression or invasion of the sinuses or even lack of hormone production, then you have to do hormone replacement therapy. Moving on to craniopharyngiomas, they are, can be cellar or supracellar, most commonly, benign, and mainly near the infundibulum. There are two histological types, adamantinomatous, which is more common, and papillary, which is found exclusively in adults. It has a bimodal peak, the first one can be in childhood, between 5 and 15, and the second one after 40. Because of its location, as it grows, it can disrupt the function of the pituitary gland, leading to somewhat the same symptoms, so headaches, visual symptoms, hormonal imbalances, even raised intracranial pressure. This is a T1 weighted image. You can see the craniopharyngioma, almost supracellar. This is a T1 
weighted image, coronal section. This is T2 of the same tumor. And here is a T1 plus contrast sagittal view of a craniopharyngioma with a cystic component. On to the last part of this video, Rathke's cleft cyst. It is non-neoplastic, usually an incidental finding in the cellar region. It occurs mainly in adults and has a female preponderance. If it becomes large, it will compress and cause symptoms like visual disturbances or headaches, etc. Here you can see a CT with low enhancement of a cystic lesion. This is a T1 weighted MRI, sagittal view. This is T1 coronal view. And this is a T2 axial view of the Rathke's cleft cyst. Alright guys, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.